to be quite honest about it, I've heard it too many times. Too much. You know, repent, 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 without ever really knowing what the word meant. Yes. Never knowing what it meant. And uh, I got tired of hearing that word, man. Yeah, all right. But, uh, you know, after I got into such a place in my life where things were so bad that I wanted to die, yeah, that change started looking awful good. Whatever it took. I mean, I, I have been willing to do whatever it took to accomplish what I wanted up to that point, as we all have. Yeah, we've all taken our mistake and we've had one or more and we've had and we kicked it to the curb to whatever it was we wanted in the moment. Yeah, okay, yeah, we did that. Why can't we do that for God? Think about it. Why can't we do that for Jesus Christ? Boy, the answer is simple. Because we don't want to. We love those things that he says that are good. Oh yeah, I'm going to bless you, live forever, no more sorrow, no more struggle, all peace, and happy, joy, 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 yeah, those things sound great. Yeah. But, we're not willing to change for it. Brothers, it's got to happen. No change. No promise. Yeah. That's as simple as it can be made. So that it begins in the mind. You find yourself at rock bottom, you look around you, and you're all alone, man. And you are hurting, baby, terribly. And now you are willing, whatever it takes, to do whatever it takes. We all know what it takes. We've all known this all our lives, but we refuse it. It is not wanting to do it, but rather wanting to do those things that please us. Okay. But now, now you're ready. And so that all those things that you used to think, oh, well, it's okay if I do this, and it's okay if I do that, they don't really mean this, no, no, that's not what you're telling yourself anymore. And now you're telling yourself, no, I can't do that. God says, no, that's wrong. No, i got to do this because God says this. Yes, that's the change. That's where it begins. If you're not telling yourself that, and you're not willing to accept what He says is the truth, it's never going to happen. You're going to continue to suffer and suffer and suffer and suffer. Never having changed your mind, let alone your behavior. Alright. So we've changed our mind. Yeah. We all know God is telling us not to lie. We all know God is telling us not to steal. We all know God is telling us not to be dishonest in anything. Yeah. We all know God is telling us not to sleep around. Yeah. There's all kinds of things that we all know God is telling us not to do. And until you tell yourself that, yes, and desire that, we're not going to get this new heart. Brothers, every one of us has been through something. Something. Most of us here are substances. Drugs and alcohol, man. Yeah, alright. Some of us got a little further than that either. I'm just saying, you know. It takes something different for all of us, brothers, but this is what I want to tell you. The pain is the same. It might take a different circumstance to produce that pain in you. Yes. But the pain is the same. Alright. Alright. We're all weak. Even now. Even now we're still weak. Yeah. Alright. There's still things about us, man, that we are weak in. Starting with this flesh. You know, the reason why we use substances is because it felt good. Yeah. It felt good. Oh, we like that, don't we? It is what it is. All right. Brothers, listen. Without this new heart, you're not going to have the strength to choose God over what feels good. Plain and simple. You ain't never going to put down the dough. You ain't never going to put down the bottle. You ain't never going to put down the spice. You ain't never going to put down that pumpkin sets. You're just going to keep on and on and on and on and on and on. Because it's not going to happen. Ever. Without this new heart. It's part of flesh that God has given to us, brothers. By changing the way we think. Listen. If all of our strength comes from the heart. Yeah. From what we desire. From what we want to desire. How is it then that your heart is ever going to desire what God wants? If you can't even think like God says. Right here. No effort whatsoever. It takes no strength. It takes no struggle to have a thought. 
if we can't choose what we want to dwell on and let it be of God, how will we ever do what God is asking of us? It's going to take your genuine desire, guys. And it's going to have to be your greatest desire. Some of you have figured that out. Man, doesn't it feel so good? Don't it feel good, brother? I mean, just the peace, man, huh? But don't worry, no more. I'm just saying, isn't it the best feeling you've ever encountered in your life? I'm just saying, brothers. Oh, my God. <laughs> but you won't know that until you felt that. And you're not going to feel that until you change the way you think. Because once you've done this, brothers, once God has given you this new heart, as we learned last week, in Jeremiah chapter 26, he said, For I will remove the heart of stone out of you, and I will give you a heart of flesh, and I will put my spirit in you, and I will cause you to keep my statutes and keep my judgments. God's ways. God's ways. Without this heart of flesh, we are not going to be able to keep God's ways. And if we can't keep God's ways, how are we going to receive the promises that He's promising us for keeping His ways? Because I, I know it might not seem like it, but faith is a gift. Faith that you believe is a gift that's been given to you by God. Because He has chosen you. And I know it seems like we choose God, brothers, and today I'm telling you that we must, yes, but in truth, it is God who chooses us. Let me ask you a question. When you're trying to find a job and you're going around putting in applications, why is it that you get hired anywhere? Because they chose you. Am I right? Yeah, alright. They chose you. Because God is choosing you. But He's been trying to choose you for a long time. He's been calling you for a long time, man. Are you going to answer the call? God will put His Spirit within us, brothers. We've been going over these scriptures. Let me repeat this again one more time for you. Acts 2.38 Then Peter said unto them, Repent. Change the way you think. Be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remissions of sins. This is when you get the new heart. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. New speak. Love God with all your mind. Change the way you think. Love God with all your heart. Desire what God desires. And love God with all your might. New spirit. Those whether you understand this or not, the body that you have moves and does everything that it does because of the spirit that is that within it. This is where the power comes from. That's the difference between you and a tree. A tree has to be moved by the wind. But you can get up and move yourself. Because you are a living soul. Now last week I said, 1 Corinthians, let me read this scripture. 1 Corinthians chapter 6 verse 17. He that is joined unto the Lord is one spirit with the Lord. Man. You know, uh, it took me a long time to accept that. I mean, think about it. I'm a man. I, I'm a low life thing, a whole and junkie. How can I ever be one spirit with God? I mean, think about it, man. God is righteous and pure. All the things that I'm not. How is it that that can happen? Because the change. Because of change, brothers. Real talk. The question is, are you going to be real about the change? Yeah, yeah, alright. Because even though other people are not, not be able to see your heart and your mind like God can, yeah, they can see what you do and they can hear your speech to determine whether or not you have a new mind and a new heart to know that you are of God. Again, Jesus said, you should know them by their fruit. Yeah. You can't take just one action. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You got to observe a little while and see what's consistent. Because that's who they are. All right, brothers. When you choose God, when you change your mind, when you change this heart, and you start trying to live for God, yeah, you're going to make mistakes. It's going to happen. 
death, but consistently you're going to do what God wants. Because the strength is going to increase in you, brothers. The joy is going to increase in you. The peace is going to increase in you as you steadily desire without giving up. Yes, it's going to happen, brothers. It's undeniable. Listen now, you know, when we hear that scripture about, you know, uh, repenting and going to be baptized, that we should receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, it almost sounds like that's all we got to do. Yeah. But it's not, brothers. Listen. Acts 5, 29 through 32. Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, We ought to obey God rather than men. For the God of our fathers raised up Jesus, whom you slew and hanged on a tree. And him hath God exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a savior, for to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. And we are his witnesses of these things, and so also is the Holy Ghost, whom God hath given to them that obey him. Listen, guys. For those of you that decide this is what you want to do with yourself, for those of you that understand the way now and are ready to accept the way, and you go forth with this mind on your heart, with this joy on your heart, with these words on your lips, brothers, there's going to be all kinds of people out there that are going to try to lead you astray because they hate you. Trust me. Yeah. Even those people you thought were your friends. Yeah. They hate you. They hate your good conversation. They hate your good conduct in Christ. And they want nothing more than to see you die. Nothing, brothers. Because your battle is not with that individual, but with the spirit behind that individual. Yes, why? Because they refuse to change. And they see you changing and they hate you for it. They hate you, brothers. We ought to obey God rather than men. Right here. It's so easy, brothers. It's so simple. I don't have to listen to nobody else. Brothers, listen, I'm glad you came today. Yeah. I'm glad you're sitting here listening. Yeah. I happen to know that I'm speaking to church with you. Yeah. But don't just take my word for it. It's right there. Man. I've been reading that book for almost 24 years now. I don't know at all, but I'm just saying, man. Yeah. What I'm sharing with you, whatever I have shared with you, what all I have ever shared with you is something that kind of showed me through my suffering, through my mistakes, and through my need. And he'll do the same with you, brothers, if you're serious. Trust me. There's nothing more that he wants than to give you understanding. Nothing. Nothing. Because if you don't understand, how can you share it with other people? It's only will. Give you this understanding through your experiences, by your mistakes, through your love and devotion, and by your faith. And we'll give it to you, brothers. Oh, but God, and not them. I might have been a little stubborn. I might have been a little too stubborn. That's a possibility. I, just, I might have saved myself some suffering. I don't know. But I couldn't trust nobody. I wasn't listening to nobody. Not nobody. There wasn't a single person out there that ever showed me what real was. No. No. It was only God. Alright. Trust the word, brothers. Not men. Do what God says. Not men. They will try to lead you astray. So that the Holy Ghost is given to them that obey God. Yeah. And there's a lot of people out there that say, you don't got to do that no more. Yeah. You don't got to keep God's commitments. I'm free. Yes. Jesus freed us from that. We can just be whoever we want, however we want, because we were born this way. I'm just saying, and all so many other excuses, brothers. You're going to have to believe God. Not me. All right. All right. So that, with this faith, believing what God says, with this love, wanting to do what God says, yes, giving and receiving this new heart, to do what God says. Let's look at the example of the repentant man. Brothers, listen. Righteousness is good. Don't get me wrong. But God favors the repentant. 
thing. Not the righteous thing. Jesus said, I came to save those which were lost. Yes, friends. Think about that. All right. All this need to repent. Yes, all of us. Question is, we really do. And this is what it's going to look like. This is Ephesians chapter 4, verses 25 through 32. Wherefore, putting away lying, speak every man truth with his neighbor. For we are all members one of another. Be angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. Neither give place to the devil. Let him that stole steal no more. But rather, let him labor, working with his hands, the thing which is good, that he may have to give to him that have need. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but let that which is good to the use of understanding, that it may minister grace to the hearers. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. Let all bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. And be ye kind one to another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, hath forgiven you. Yeah. Remember that conversation. New heart, new words coming out your mouth. Jesus said, it's not what goes into the man's mouth that defies him, but what comes out. Because what comes out proceeds from the heart. And, and so that those, those words that you're speaking are coming directly from this new heart you're supposed to have. Think about that. Think about that. Yes, but it's going to take you a little bit to catch yourself. It is. Certainly. Why are you gonna why are you gonna catch yourself? Because you feel it after the word comes out of your mouth. You feel it. Oh man, I should have said that. Man, I'm done quitting that. I'm never doing that again. But godly sorrow produces true repentance. When you feel the godly sorrow, it will give you a strength and it will give you a zeal that you will tell yourself, I will never do it again. I will die before I do it again. We learned that last week. Remember that, brothers. Remember that. This is the repentant man. He said, let him that stole steal no more. All right. So, the commandment is, Thou shalt not steal from your neighbor. Yeah, alright. So that if you stole, you stop. Obviously, yeah, you stop. But is that repentance? Is that changing your ways? No, no, that's just stopping. That's saying, yeah. But rather, let him labor, working with his hands that thing which is good that he may have to give to him that hath need think about it before you were a person who took things yeah yeah but now you are a person who gives things that's the change that's the change Right there. To just really stop doesn't mean your heart has changed at all, does it? Huh. You go to jail for stealing, don't you? Yeah. It don't take a, a, a new heart to stop that. That's common sense. One of those, the evidence of the new heart, of the repentance, is in the giving. Brothers, listen. I don't care what it is that you need to change from. It flows with everything. Everything. Every sin. Every problem you have. It's not enough to just stop using drugs. No. We must go on to help other people. Yes. Think about that. 
there's nothing feels better, is it, than to tell you a story to somebody, man, and to see them listen, thinking that they won't change. There's nothing better than that. Nothing does. And there's nothing sadder than watching somebody ignore you. Just saying, all right. Repentance, brothers. It's not just stopping what you're doing. But doing its opposite. Think about it. Why were you doing it to start with? Because you had no love for God. You certainly had no love for those people you were robbing. Or whatever it was that you were doing. And so just to nearly stop that doesn't mean you love them. No. But when you give. Yeah. Or when you try to help somebody else that was in the same boat that you were. There's the love, isn't it? Alright, remember that always, brothers. The repentant man does not merely stop what it is that he's doing, but he begins to do its opposite. Generally, the equal and exact opposite. Yeah. And if you ever have a problem with wondering what that might be, yeah, just ask yourself one question. What would Jesus do? If you're doing something that you need to stop from, man, that you feel like you need to repent from, that God is telling you not to do, ask yourself what Jesus would do if you can't figure out what the opposite of that is. Yeah. Alright. Just saying those are words. Trust me. Yeah. Alright. And believe that. Yeah, that's the hard part. Alright. Listen now. James 1, 19 through 25. Wherefore, my beloved. Let every man be swift to hear. Oh, that's wisdom there, isn't it? Yeah. Slow to speak, slow to wrath. For the wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of God. Wherefore, lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of nonness, and receive with humility the engrafted word which is able to save your souls. But be ye doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. For if any man be just a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man who looks at his face in a mirror. For he sees himself and then walks away and straightway forgetteth what he looked like. But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty and continues therein, he be not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work. This man shall be blessed in his deed. <laughs> Both, first and foremost, you've got to be a hearer. Because this is how faith comes. Yeah, yeah. Faith comes by the hearing, and that hearing has to be the word good. Yeah, alright. Then, then, we go on to be a doer. I wonder what's we heard. No, it's out of the day. I told you guys, man. Yeah, that we need to go out with the word that you have heard today and share it with those guys who are in phase one to be to make it because they got put on their speech. Yeah, alright. That's a doer. That's what a doer does. A hearer just sits there and listens. But a doer goes forth with that. Yes, okay, brothers. It's not enough to just be a hearer. Yeah, it's good. Don't get me wrong. It's necessary. But it's not enough. Yeah, it's not enough. Let's understand that a little better. James 2, 14 through 26. Let's learn a little bit about this, brothers. Apparently, this is a huge controversy in the world. What does that prophet, my brother? Oh, a man say he have faith and have not works. Notice that when someone says you're a doer, yeah, that's an action, isn't it? That you commit yourself to some kind of action that turns out to be a deed, or in this case, your works. Can faith alone save him? If a brother or sister be naked and destitute of daily food, and one of you say unto them, Depart in peace, be ye one and filled. Notwithstanding, you give them not those things which are needful to the body, what does it profit? Even so, if faith, having not works, is dead, being alone. Yea, a man says, God has faith, and I have works. 
and I say, show me that faith without thy works, and I will show you my faith by my works. Thou believest that there is one God? Thou doest well. The devils also believe and tremble. But wilt thou know, O vain man, that faith without works is dead? Was not Abraham our father justified by works when he had offered Isaac his son upon the altar? See, it uh, how faith brought with works, and by works was faith made perfect. And the scripture was fulfilled with saying, Abraham believed God, and it was imputed unto him for righteousness. And he was called the friend of God, you see, that how by works man is justified, and not by faith only. Yeah, brothers, this is a huge church verse. And as everybody will tell you, you're not saved by works. Yeah, no man is saved by works. And I would agree. Yeah. You can't go around acting like Jesus thinking you're going to do good stuff and go to heaven. No, that's not going to work. No. Why? Because there's no repentance. We're faking the fun. Because there's all kinds of people up there doing it. Yeah. All right. Sometimes it's not just what we do. Yeah. But why you do what you do? What's the agenda? Is it just for money? Yeah, yeah, I'm just saying, yeah. Is it just to get next to old girl? I, I, I went to church to visit old girls. I'm just saying, yeah, I did those things, man. All right, yeah. Think about it. What's the agenda? What's the desire? Is it to be faithful? Or faithless? Is it to be saved of this world? Or to be of God? Brothers, listen. Faith without works is dead. Some people call these kind of things that you see here today works. Maybe, I don't know. Yeah, alright. But they're not real hard. I mean, we'll be able to feel like we're going to cook some breakfast. We have to shop once a week or something like that, you know, to get the material, to get the stuff. God provides everything else pretty much. Yeah, okay. Sometimes we have to help with that, but not often. Alright. It's not too hard. Yeah. Now, when you do it for years and years and years and years, it becomes a sign to those who see. And yet, they refuse to believe. It is what it is. Yeah. All right. Remember, earlier I said it's not what somebody does in the internet, but what somebody does consistently. Yes? Okay. This is how we shall know them. This is the truth that we should know them by. All right, brothers. Abraham is called the father of faith because he believed God. Remember, we had that in the message. God called Abraham out of the city that he was living in and told him he wanted to go somewhere else. Abraham had never seen God, never heard God, and didn't know where this place was. God was seeking him. But he went. He went. Fully believing that God was going to give him this land if he went. And trust me, it took him years to get there. All right. He believed God. He endured with this faith and he went there. Furthermore, God promised him a son. And he promised him that there would be a great nation. Whose number was as the stars of the sky from this one son. And then God gave him that one son. Even though he was no man. He and his wife were well past the age of having children. And God gave him this son. Yes. But then his faith was tested. It was tested. How much do you believe me? Do you really believe me? But trust me, that test is going to come for you. It's going to come for each and every one of us who profess to believe. <laughs> God asked Abraham to sacrifice his son upon the mountain. Like a lamb. I can't imagine what was going through Abraham's mind, but he did it. But he was doing it. And the angel stopped him. Five times not five. Gotta see my faith. Yeah. Alright. Alright. But this faith without works is dead. And faith through works. Faith will be made perfect. The more you believe God, and the more that you are a doer of the word, doing what God says, the greater your faith will become. That's 
And they fantasize about being some kind of warrior, you know? Yeah. They have that work, live action, role playing stuff, and they're just, oh man, they're really loving that. You know, it'd be so cool to live like this. Because I live like that every day. And so can you. Because there is a war going on. And it's a battle every single day. The Spirit is given to them that obey God who are not just hearers of the word but doers also because of their faith and that faith is going to be made perfect by works first never forget that look man I get it look when you first start out you know you, you get kind of you get the next starts burning you, you have this feeling in your heart that God will be trying to tell you to do something for me I'm sitting on the back of the bus and this black woman come up this who is a baby and God started telling me to pray for that little baby and I thought there's no way she's going to let me pray for that kid no God I don't want to do that but then something can change and I said okay God alright I'll do it my ears burning, my neck burning, I spoke to that woman. And she let me. She let me pray for it. I laid my hands on it and held it and prayed for it. Just like God put on my heart. I don't know what happened. But I tell you what happened in me. Yeah. Joy. Peace. These things will be increasing, you brothers. Each time that you give in to what God is laying on your heart, these things will be increased in you. Quit running from God. It's time to start being a doer. And not just a hearer. So if you're sitting here right now, we got to come. God told him. God told him. To say, those that are telling this truth. Ephesians 5, excuse me, 1 Corinthians 6, 9 through 11. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, that's homosexuals, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, or extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. And such were some of you. But now ye are washed, and ye are sanctified, and ye are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of God. Are you guys? Are you? Are you really? What's going to be the evidence of that? This justification. This sanctification. What's going to be the evidence of that? The repentance. The repentance, brothers. Doesn't mean you won't ever slip. It doesn't mean you won't ever fall to grace. Yeah. Yeah. This can happen. But what I can tell you is that each day goes back. You're really stronger. And stronger, and stronger, and stronger, and stronger, and stronger, until you're strong enough to start drawing people to yourself. And start telling them the things that God has been telling you. And strengthening you to do. And then, it'll be strong enough. And they too will go out to do the same thing. Yeah. Repentance. There's evidence, brothers. Ephesians 5, 6 through 16. Let no man deceive you with vain words. For because of those things, come.
Gentlemen, the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. Be not ye therefore partakers with them, for ye were sometimes in darkness, but now are ye the light in the Lord. Walk as children of the light, for the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth, proving what is acceptable unto the Lord. And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. For it is a shame even to speak of those things which are worked in darkness. But in all things that are reproved are made manifest by the light. For whatsoever doth make manifest is light. Wherefore he saith, Awakest thou that sleepest and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. See then that ye walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the days, because the days are evil. Earlier, brothers, I told you that you who have been lifted, you who have felt this joy, you who have felt this movement, brothers, and you go forth with this feeling in your heart, with these words on your lips, and those people hear you, those people that hate your conversation, those people that hate your good works, will try to lead you astray. Don't be deceived. Don't be deceived with vain words, brothers. Vain words are those words that you want to hear. Those vain words are the words that tell you, you can do what you want to do. You can do what your heart says. You can have fun. You're forgiven. Yeah. No, brothers. Don't not be deceived. There's only one way to be deceived, brothers. And that's simply not to read. The word is there. It's all there. We're deceived because we want to be deceived. We're deceived because we want to be led astray. We are deceived because we want to do what we want to do instead of what God wants us to do. But we always sit here today. Even if you don't know the first thing that God is asking of you, if in your heart and in your mind you say, I want to do what God wants me to do, guess what will happen? You'll start understanding what it is that God wants from you. A little at a time. A little at a time. Trust me, he's not going to overload you, brothers. A little at a time. That's what will happen. Are you going to make your mind up? Are you going to make your mind up? Then we do it, brothers. Because for this behavior that we have worked in the past, uh, the wrath of God comes upon us. Yeah, this judgment that's going to happen upon all mankind. That's why. Because we have done what we wanted to do instead of what God wanted us to do. It's got to have to be all the way in. All the way in. All the way in. If you're only one foot in, if you're only doing a little of what Christ says, <laughs> you might as well not do anything that He says. Because you're either all the way in or all the way out. There's no half step in this. There's no half step. There's no sum of your heart. There's no sum of your mind. It's got to be all or none. In God, there is no darkness at all. None. Darkness is sin. And in God, there is no darkness at all. Therefore, there should be no darkness in you. In you. Meaning, in your mind and in your hearts. No, I don't want to do that no more. I want to do what God wants me to do. That's light, brothers. That is the birth of the light within you. Right there. Right there. Brothers, it's time to start being men of our word. It's time to start saying what we mean and meaning what we say. Because that's what God created you to be. Listen, brothers, you want to call yourself a man? Well, there's, there's, there's three things that you're going to have to be a man of to be a man. Yeah, and if you're not a man of any one of these three things, then you're not yet a man. So, see, you're going to have to be a man of your word. You're going to have to mean what you say and say what you mean and keep your word when you give it. Because that's honest. Secondly, you're 
living has to be a man of your work. The fruit of your hands. Only you can make you a lazy person. People can deny you the opportunity, brothers. Yeah, but that ain't got nothing to do with your work ethic. You need to do all things as if unto God. That's when you be a man of your work. Because God is deserving of your best. No matter what you're doing, but no matter who you're around, but no matter who it's for. That's what people will want you to work for them. That's what people will pay you what you want to work for them. And lastly, brother, most importantly, you got to have to be a man of God. A man of God with this true faith. Because how can you call yourself a man if you do not recognize the one that calls you man? That's simple. What you think about that, brother? That's real simple, ain't it? Man, that's like crystal clear. I don't know about you all, but one of the things that eat at me when I was younger was, am I a man? When am I a man? When can I start walking around with my chin up? I am a man. I feel good about my manhood. <laughs> but that was when, brothers, when I became a man of my room, a man of my work, and a man of faith. And that's one of the words for you, brothers. Don't be deceived. Brothers, let me give you some hope today. Because I'm going to be honest with you. You know, I'll make it sound real simple. Change the way you think. It's going to change the way you feel. It's going to change what you do. And it's going to be the hardest journey you've ever taken. There's going to be more come against you that has ever come against you in your life. You're going to have to hold on more tightly than you have ever held on to anything in your life. And that includes a syringe, the pipe, the bottle, the bottle, I don't care what it was. Because look at you doing. You're quitting now, aren't you? You're never going to be able to quit this. Ever. Ever. Second Peter, chapter 3, verses 8 and 9. My beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day with the Lord is as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day with God. The Lord is not slack concerning His promises, as some men count slackness. But as long suffering to usward, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. One thing that you want to stand and find, brothers, is that it can never happen fast enough. It can never happen fast enough. When you make your mind up, when you make your heart up, brothers, it cannot happen fast enough for you. And because it can't happen fast enough, you get up. Because it's just better to get high than it is to sit supper waiting on God to fill his box to me. Well, you're going to have to get in for the wrong haul, man. It's saying. It's time to stop thinking about the minute. Let's we'll start thinking about eternity. Because look here. As men, yes, as men, it's not just about us, is it? How many of you got kids? Come on, kids. Ha, all right. It's not just about you, is it? What's your job is dead? What are you supposed to be doing? Because I don't know whether you know this or not, but there's only one reason why God has given any of us children. And that's to raise that seed to Him. That's what's wrong with this world right now. Just saying. That's the only reason he ever got me, brothers. Why? You raising up his seed? You raising up any seed? What seed are you raising up? It's not just about you, brothers. I know it seems like that. It's got to be about you here today, here and now. Yeah, for those when you walk away from here today, it's not just about you anymore. Now it's about every single person that crosses your path. 
with all that you have heard, with all that you have felt, with all that you have seen. Same teaching and the same vigor. But God is going to keep his word to you. God is going to keep all of his words to you. Yes. What about it? Why on it? not just about you it's about a whole bunch of other people too that he also wants to save that he also wants to turn to him yes all right don't worry about that he just promised you in the minute that you did what it was you were supposed to do you were supposed to do it but what i can't tell you about this, what i will tell you for certain is that the first time that you suffer for righteousness sake not because you made some stupid choice not because of something you did way back long ago catching up with you but the first time that you suffer for righteousness sake you will be filled with joy you don't know in that moment brothers but I'm all shadow of a doubt you know in that moment this crazy, wild mouth fool will come back to your remembrance and you'll know in that moment. Watch this for sake, brothers. Learn. Repent. Be baptized. Receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Believe God. Love Jesus Christ. Call on Jesus Christ. Confess Jesus Christ to other people. And love Him. It's a lifelong pursuit, brothers. It's not going to happen overnight. The only thing that can happen in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, is you changing your mind. As you making up your heart, I will never do it again. Never. I want to do what God wants me to do. Always. That's the only thing that can happen in a moment, brothers. Yeah? Alright. Make that choice. Make that choice. Brothers, and your behavior will be a reflection of that choice that you have made. That choice that nobody else can see. That much I can promise you. Yeah. Right, right, brothers. Time is short. I, I come down here and I stick the salvation, to the pathway of salvation, and I bring the messages to you, brothers. This is the most important thing in your lives. But time is growing short. I'm betting some of you have looked around yourselves and understood this. The time is getting shorter and shorter and shorter. It's time to go gather some fruit, brothers. It's time to go gather some fruit. First, you're going to have to become fruit. But as I offer today, I offer you today, yes, to become that fruit for the kingdom's sake. To become that fruit for your children's sake. To become that fruit for your wife's sake, for your mom's sake, for your dad's sake, for your brother's sake, for the man, the sake of the man who's sleeping next to you, the, mom, the guy you meet at Walmart, and somebody you're riding the bus with. I'll give you a chance to be that fruit today. Don't let it pass you by. Yeah, we're going to wrap up and load up. Any of you guys that wants to hit that water and be waiting, we'll go back and get that in. Make that choice, brother. Make that choice. Alright, let's close. Father, again, we thank you for this understanding, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for showing us how to choose you, Father, with our mind and our renewing of our mind, Father. We thank you, Father, for choosing us, showing us how to desire you, Father, to receive this new heart, Lord, that we might be able to join ourselves unto you, Father. That which you are, that spirit, Father, that will come and dwell within us, Lord, to become one within us, Lord, that by this spirit we would be perfect.
protected, Father. And by the Spirit, all the weaknesses that we have, Father, your strength should show to those around you, Lord, that it is possible, Lord, that we can change, Father, that we can do these things when we call on you, Lord. And not just with the lips, but with the heart, Father. Give us the strength, Lord. Father, we pray for those people, Lord, whom you are calling, Lord, those people who answer the call, and those people who may not answer the call today, but maybe tomorrow, Father, we pray that you strengthen them, Lord. We pray that you watch over them, Lord, and we pray that you teach them, Lord, through their circumstances and their wisdom, Father, that they may call all on you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We got a slice of sack lunches, guys. Uh, how do you think anybody might need some?